Hello and welcome back to Mirror Interpretation to the Robot. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Ioana. I am an interpreter and a polyglot. And in today's video, I created a training on how to use an interpreter. And uh, we are going to do this training together. How do I use an interpreter? This is practical training on how to use a professional interpreter and how to be professional when using an interpreter. If you guys don't know me, my name is Joanna Todorova. I am an interpreter and a polyglot and CEO of Mirror Interpretation Todorova and the creator of this YouTube channel. I have a Master of Business Administration, Business Management, excuse me, Bachelor in Business Administration and Bachelor in Business Development and Sociology that I finished in Trek University of Stara Zagora, Bulgaria. I am BTGCCH, I am MBCMI certified interpreter. Languages that I speak are Bulgarian, Italian, Macedonian and Russian. This is the languages that I work with and I do speak a little bit of Spanish. Um, so, uh, before we start, guys, um, I use the national practices and standards, code of ethics standards and protocol that we have to, for the interpreters, and I apply them in this slide uh, show where I talk about the most important protocols that the interpreter must follow and that the provider have to be aware of. Provider may include doctor, nurses, I don't know, banks, management, anyone who use an interpreter, how to use an interpreter professionally, educatedly. The first slide is the difference between interpreters and translators. I'm not going to read this for you guys, but I'm just going to underline. You can read the whole setting at ata.org. Translators write the text. Quite often when I interpret over the phone, they say, go ahead, interpreter, translate that. Interpreters cannot translate, they can speak. So interpreting is speaking, translator it's writing. And I'm gonna start with National Code of Ethics for Interpreters in Healthcare. What is the standards for the interpreter in these slides? You're just gonna see the most important of them. I put the do sign here just so you guys are aware. Code of ethics for interpreters, they have, we have to keep everything confidential, render the message accurately, be impartial and refrain from counseling, advising, and projecting personal beliefs and bias. We have to maintain the boundaries of the professional role and refrain from personal involvements develop awareness of our own culture, treat all parties with respect. Interpreter have right to act as an advocate when patient health, well-being, dignity are in danger. The interpreter tries to continuously grow and develop in professional and ethical manners. I, I use this code of ethics because not following those core of ethics or following those core of ethics and standards for the interpreter is really challenging. One of the most challenging part is called faithfulness. I'm gonna read the core of ethics that you see in the blue and I'm gonna read don't and do's. So you will know how to use an interpreter. So the, import the importance of ensuring that the context and the spirit of the message is faithfully rendered. This is the interpreter job to faithfully render the message. The context with their spoken, the value of fidelity, fidelity to the original message without adding or omitting or distorting the messages, which mean we have to totally convey the meaning from one language to another, in this case, let's say it's in USA, would be versus English or versus the target language. For the doctors, please don't. I will give you an example. Interpreter, you should listen and do what I say. 
how dare you are you insulting me an interpreter are you insulting me there is a cultural conflict because here in the usa it's culturally not acceptable to instruct doctors or read protocol uh often providers believe that interpreter is being rude or inappropriate when interpreter is simply reading protocol remember interpreters need to read protocols and instruct everyone before a use of an interpreter or during a use of an interpreter mm -hmm. so what to do do listen carefully to the instructions of the interpreters and follow them here i'm gonna talk about the faithfulness in conveying offensive content the reason that i would uh, make two slides here is because in america doctors often get hurt and offended by certain messages meanwhile in some culture using a colorful word as f and s and so on is considered the norm if you want to have the cultural awareness trainings and understand where this is normal, you can click on the link above and find this training about being culturally sensitive and being more aware why certain culture use certain words and that is not personal and is not offending to you. The interpreter must interpret faithfulness and, and communicate every cultural barrier, discriminatory prejudice, there is the need of the interpreter to clean the messages up and make them nice. The reason why is because doctors and medical staff and providers get very angry and very offensive. So for doctors and providers, don't get offended if the interpreter interpret offensive content. Don't attack the interpreter if they say something you do not like. Don't react towards the interpreter with emotion, resentment, anger, and hostility. Don't presume that the interpreter is performing poorly if you hear something you do not like or you consider offensive. Do. Do remember that the interpreter is interpreting and never offending you. Interpreter is only interpreting. Listen to the rendition of the sentence. Do remember interpreters interpret what your patient or customer is telling you. Stay calm and collected when hearing unpleasant statements. Role boundary. This is the second big challenge. And that's why I'm going through the National Code of Ethics and Standard that train interpreters to maintain impartiality, refrain from counseling, advising, projecting personal beliefs. To maintain the boundaries of the professional role, ensure transparency and prevent potential conflict of interest. Doctors or providers or English speakers don't get upset don't mm -hmm. give orders to the interpreter. Do not ask questions to the interpreters, but directly to your client, patient, or customers. Doctor, for example, listen interpreter, do what I said, ask him to tell you if he is sick. Do not get offended when interpreters read protocols and asks you to follow rules. And here I'm going to underline that it's culturally unacceptable for medical staff or doctors or office as well to receive instructions. Yes, it is culturally inappropriate. You can take the training, three hours of a culture. If you like, it's a free training on my YouTube channel. What to do instead? Stay calm, collected. Remember, it's interpreter job to read protocols when necessary. Do listen and follow the instructions. Those instructions and protocols are created to help you communicate clearly and directly with your customers. Remember, keep emotional reactions off. The interpreter is never offending you or willing to offend you. Do respect when interpreter communicate. When interpreter, there is a typo here, forgive me. So be respectful when interpreter communicate the role boundaries, which mean, for example, 
if you ask an interpreter to trans to side translate a legal document or consent form, if the interpreter doesn't feel confident, they can say no, and this should be respected. There should be no reaction, no resentment. Now we cannot see the standards. California standards for healthcare interpreters. Once again, I'm reading the ethical principle for you guys that are doctor or staff or anyone who uses interpreter just to be aware that this is what the interpreter have to follow. It's not personal, it's the national standards. Confidentiality, impartiality, respect, professionalism, integrity, accuracy and completeness, and cultural responsiveness. This is the sixth ethical principle by California standards. Protocols, once again, California standards is protocol, for example, pre-encounter, pre-session, which means interpreter must introduce in both languages and give instructions, which means uh, doctors cannot imply something different than these protocols. These protocols are created to make this system function to make the use of an interpreter clear, transparent, and comfortable. Don'ts for providers. Mm -hmm. Interpreter, remove this section and follow my instructions. No interpreter, you need to listen and follow my instructions. Interpreter, do what I say and what not. I have here a lot of those. There is a cultural belief that at the doctor's office, you should adhere to the doctor's instruction rather than follow protocols. I understand that doctors, you guys study very long time to become a doctor, and there is a profound respect for your profession. But you need to have a respect for the interpreters as well. Interpreters also spend many years to learn a language, to master it to the level of medical interpreter. And interpreters must adhere to the protocol, not to you doctors. Interpreters are not teaching doctors how to be a doctor. And the doctor, please do not teach interpreters how to be an interpreter because this is a professional boundary crossing. Please providers allow the interpreter to introduce. Do not start with questions. It is interpreter in, is it interpreter job to read instructions to provide the language and the ID? You do not have to ask with this interrupting the introduction. But if you don't hear it properly, you may ask for repetition. But quite often I have the situation where medical providers or staff interrupts me, not allow me to read the preset, but instead of asking me, what is your ID number? Please be respectful. Protocol two, during the encounter, the interpreting practices to support patient provider, doctor, patient, I don't know, banker, client. This means that you do not address the interpreter during the entire duration of the call or the setting, but speak to each other directly. This is one of the most challenging uh, protocols and use first person when interpreting. So interpreter is obliged to use first person. First person mean I. For example, I'm a female in gynecology. I could say I have a breast pain. If I am female interpreter in a male um, encounter with urologist, I would say I am having a testicle pain. As the interpreter, I speak in first person, although it's obviously I'm a female and I do not have a testicles. I need to follow these protocols and for you providers, important to be aware of them. For example, don'ts, doctors, mm -hmm. doctors, these real samples. Do listen, do what I say. Interpreter, ask him to tell you if he has a headache. Remember, doctors, interpreter is not your employee and cannot follow your personal instruction. 
professional interpreter must follow protocols and not instructions of anyone, office and doctor. This is standards. They're equal for everyone. They are not specially for you doctors. They are not specially for the nurse or for anyone. This is protocols on being professional when you're using interpreter. Don't get angry, upset, resentful. Do not treat interpreters with complaint for rudeness. Just follow the instructions of the interpreter. Do. Interpreter is supposed to read this statement each time you speak to the interpreter. And the statement is, please do not address the interpreter, but address your customer directly. Because of this protocol number two, uh, instead of speaking to the interpreter, address your patient. For example, doctor speak directly to the patient. Do not address the interpreter. Interpreter role is to interpret and interpreter cannot speak on your behalf either of either party be mindful here protocol the need for the parties to pose frequently this is the protocol of use of an interpreter and interpreter also needs to intervene for clarification if it's necessary once again what not for providers mm -hmm. do not read half a page at once with a statement. Be aware interpreters does not have the statement in front. The interpreter is taking notes, writing when you speak to assure accuracy. Avoid being emotional, angry, upset, resentful if the interpreter reminds you about their human limitations and need to use short phrases. If you get negative, nervous, angry, this may affect negatively the interpreter accuracy because it's very unpleasant when you try to be precise to somebody to, to make sounds and show you that there is something not okay with you. Avoid negative statements, anger, making sound, or as you may feel upset, frustrated, or angry if you feel the interpreter is not obeying to you. As sad as it may sound, there is a lot of power situation when you interpret for medical providers. Please, guys, remember interpreters are human. Maybe this interpreter listened to this statement for the first time. The interpreter is writing, an interpreter is a human, and if you pause frequently, this, is will, this will assure accurate and fast rendition. Be patient and polite. This will help interpreters to stay calmer and focus on their task and provide a better rendition. Try to be calm and collected even if it's a stressful moment for you. Your calmness and professionalism can help the interpreter in the session. You, as a provider, have ability to create professional, calm, and pleasant environment. Protocols, California protocols, once again, during the encounter, maximize and encourage direct communication between patient and provider. Remind patient provider to address directly as needed. So, which means every time the doctor addresses the interpreter and not the patient, the doctor have to read the statement. For example, providers call interpreters and list, read list of five questions and they say, okay, so now I would add the person. So you can ask him, her. Remember, interpreter can interpret only after introducing. The interpreter can't ask questions on your behalf. Remember, interpreter mm -hmm. is not responsible if the patients avoid responding to the questions. Interpreter job is only to interpret. Yes, as doctor, provider, or caller, you can briefly instruct interpreter in regard of a call or a session, but interpreter cannot render those instructions as interpreting. Your instructions towards the interpreter are not going to be interpreted to the limited English-speaking person. The interpreter is not allowed to interpret the instructions you give to the interpreter itself. 
Interpreter cannot ask any questions on your behalf. Interpreter can interpret what you're saying after introducing in both languages. Used first person, we already talked in the other standards. Remember, the interpreter is not your employee and it must manage the flow of the session. Interpreter is responsible to manage the flow of the session, not the doctor, not the provider, not the bank representative. Inter this is the interpreter job. Remember, you are not the boss of the interpreter and be mindful that the interpreter must follow protocols. It's not a power game where you show that you are the boss. The interpreter asks for clarifications. Don't get angry or upset or resentful. If the interpreter intervenes, it's not to upset you or be rude, but only to read protocols, ask for clarification process to ensure smooth and clear communication. Do not be or get upset or emotional. Do. Do trust the prof professionalism of the interpreter and their ability to manage the flow. Do not interrupt or give orders to interpreters. You have to allow interpreters to follow protocols. Interpreters are never trying to conflict with you. The interpreters must follow those protocols the best they can. Reading protocols to you as English speaking member it's never done to upset you. Do follow the interpreter's instruction. They are never personal. Interpreter does not want to upset you, hurt your feelings. They are just obliged to follow protocols. Interpreter roles is converter clarifier, cultural clarifier, and patient advocate. The cultural clarifier is when interpreter offers cultural clarification and the advocate in this role interpreter can do in order to support the patient well-being. Avoid the resentment when cultural clarification is offered. For example, what not to do. Do your job without adding those things. I know better. I have that doctor say mm -hmm. to me that it's, uh, I don't want to know about this. Uh, when interpreters are in the law, role of advocates, avoid aggression, anger, or being emotional. Interpreters are rarely in the role of advocates. Some individuals express the reluctance to underdo vaccines. If the provider exerts significant pressure on a patient to convince them to vaccine, the interpreter may be patient advocate. So, be mindful when patients respond with a no, as an interpreter will feel very uncomfortable in those sessions when providers ask the same question more than twice, and clearly the patient states that their decision is a no, and even stated sometimes in English, and then the provider is continue pushing there. Be respectful of the professional role boundaries and mindful that even if the advice procedure vaccine may benefit the patient, in your professional opinion as a doctor, the patient still has the right to say no, and the patient decision must be respected. So if the interpreter is interpreting the response no, and the doctor asks like they don't understand, this put the interpreter in a very difficult situation this happens, it happens rarely, but be mindful. Ethical principles of California standards, confidentiality, impartiality, respect, professionalism, accuracy, and completeness. Be aware and treat interpreters with respect and dignity. Accuracy, once again, don't get upset with the interpreters mm -hmm. for interpreting accurately the meaning of message if the words offended you or your culture. Is in, the interpreter's job is to interpret everything. Remember that curse words and obscenity are norm in some cultures such as Europe, Russia, Slavic, Spain, Italy. 
Using curse word is considered a form of expression, sign of manliness, struggle, way to express that you are unhappy in the situation, expressing emotions or feeling. In certain cultures, men use curse word as a symbol of their manliness and a form, not as a form to offend or disrespect. I am aware as an interpreter that in American culture it is not acceptable to curse at the doctor's office, but indeed this is happening. And if ever in interpreting session you hear anything like that, do not get aggressive or offended with the interpreter. Interpreter is just doing their job. Now we're going to see the national standards of practices and cultural awareness. Um, sorry, there is a typo there, but once again, how to use an interpreter. Again, accuracy and standard. We have to accurately interpret the spirit original message completely, replying the register st style and tone of the vo voice of the speaker. Do not interrupt or speak loudly with interpreters. Do not constantly repeat, do it interpreter, go ahead interpreter, go tell her. Pose instead. Remember, interpreter has not forgotten that they have to interpret. Interpreter is writing or waiting for you to pause to render the message. Don't intervene asking questions, are you done? Hold on now, let me respond to you. Sometimes you doctors hear two words and you get really upset and you start to interpret the, interrupt the interpreter. It's not okay. Please, instead, allow the interpreter to fully render the message. When done with the statement, simply pause and allow the interpreter to interpret. Be mindful. The interpreter will pause if the rendition is complete. Sometime, if it's a long statement, the interpreter may say end of message, interpreter speaking. So you be aware, uh, do not interrupt guys. This makes the accuracy very challenging. Professionalism, honest, ethical, prepared, skill limitations, avoid site translations. If you don't know what site translation, we have this, the national standards of practice of interpreters. The site of translation is when you have a written document and the interpreter is reading it in English and stating it in the target language. Okay, don't frequently interrupt, speak alongside the interpreters. This makes challenge to be accuracy. Don't presume that interpreter is rude or trying to offend you. Don't get upset if interpreter does not know medical world. Mm -hmm. For example, it happened to me, I don't know a word, and I hear the statement, well, I don't need you then. Bye. This is not okay, guys. Don't get angry if interpreters refuses to do sight translations. We are not like mentally capable of doing some complicated sight translation. We have the right to refuse to do that. Be aware, this is not the interpreter job. And if interpreters say no, do not take it personally. Be aware, interpreters are humans and know everything. It's not possible. We are limited humans. Be polite, kind, and courteous. If clarification is necessary, do provide it without emotional involvement. Uh, medical interpreters faced uh, pressure to perform site translation. Be respectful if the interpreter decides not to provide site translations. And now uh, this next setting will be how to use an interpreter. There is some real scenarios that I'm going to elaborate with you guys. Uh, and... Um, and see how should be done. We're gonna have three personages of this setting, limited English speaking, interpreter and a doctor, how and when to address interpreter. 
And okay, guys, and thank you for being here. Uh, I have the honor to have Jose to be the doctor in this scenario where uh, Jose is going to uh, be our doctor in the scenario, doctor interpreter and doctor interpreter and patient. There would be five scenarios, what not to do when you use an interpreter. Uh, and then in each of those scenarios, me and Jose will show you how to do it properly. Go ahead, Jose, introduce yourself while I'm opening the screen with the slides. Hello, welcome again to this session. My name is Jose Alvarez. I'm a polyglot, a linguist, and a medical interpreter. And I will be glad to join Joanna in this series of settings in terms of uh, doctor-patient scenarios and the proper interpreter role. So in, in the first scenarios, you guys, when you see red and when you see the sign that says don't do it, for everybody who uses an interpreter, this is example how not to do it. And me and, and Jose will show you how it's not supposed to be done. And then we're going to give you a proper coaching on how to do it properly. So I'm going to start with, thank you for calling the language interpreter. My name is Ani and I will be a Russian interpreter. Everything you say will be kept confidential. How can I help you? Hello, interpreter. We're going to call Ms. Elena and ask her some questions. It's a pre-op call, but before we start with the questionnaire, I need you to confirm some information for me, okay? I need you to ask him to tell you his name, birthday, address, and phone number. Okay, are you ready? I will plug him in. Go ahead and ask him. Here you go, interpreter. Go ahead and ask him the questions. I plug you in. I need you to confirm this information. Go ahead, do what I say. Okay, doctor. May I introduce myself in the target language? Interpreter, just ask the question. Do your job. Oh, doctor, uh, I can't interpret unless I introduce myself. Can I introduce? Yes, do it. Ask what I told you. Здравствуйте, спасибо большое, что вы перезвонили. Меня зовут Иоанна, я буду ваш переводчик русский и английский. Все, что вы говорите, будет сохраняться в тайном момент. Пожалуйста. Go ahead, doctor. Do ask her the questions, interpreter. Uh, in order to assure clear communication and quality in the interpretation, please address the client directly, ask the questions directly to the patient, not to the interpreter. For example, how old are you? Okay, whatever you say, just ask him for his name and address. And this is the end of our setting, guys. Uh, interpreter needs to read protocol each time that the doctor address me as asking me, do, say, and do, and so on. Interpreter is not allowed to ask any questions, but interpret exactly what the doctor says. In this case, the doctor says, okay, whatever you say, ask him the questions. So if I interpret this to the target language, this is not going to make much sense. So now we're going to show you the same scenario, how it's supposed to be done. I, again, am going to be in the role of the interpreter, and Jose is going to be in the role of the doctor. And let's see again. Do it mean green? You see the green screen, and we are just scenario where we have a doctor and a patient on the line. The doctor calls me, and I'm saying, hello, thank you for calling the language interpreter line. My name is Ioana. I will be a Russian interpreter. Everything you say will be kept confidential. How can I help you? Uh, hello, interpreter. We're going to call uh, Ms. Elena and ask her some questions. It's a pre-op call, uh, but before we start, I need to confirm some information. I'm going to add you to the call, and we're going to proceed from here. Something important that for uh, medical personnel, it's okay to give instructions to the interpreter beforehand because intrusions towards interpreters are not interpreter to the language, um, to the LEP. 
Yes, I'm just going to repeat the instruction, guys. So you see the doctor brief me as an interpreter. This is professional and this is accurate and this is OK. Just remember, if you brief the interpreter, this is not going to be interpreted to the target language. It's just briefing because it's just the interpreter and the provider on the line. And here I am. Thank you for briefing me, doctor. I'm ready to proceed. Please go ahead. Interpreter, we are connected. You can introduce yourself. Uh, salve, buongiorno. Grazie per la vostra telefonata. Mi chiamo Ioana, sarò il vostro interprete. Qualsiasi cosa che condividete in questa conversazione sarà contenuta in segreto. Un momento, per favore. Go ahead, doctor. Uh, hi, Elena. This is Jim calling you from the surgery center. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions, but before I proceed, I need to confirm your identity. Ah, grazie mille, dottor Jim. Io stavo aspettando la sua telefonata. Che tipo di informazione le serve? Uh, what is your first, last name and date of birth? Uh, wait for the interpreter, doctor. Uh, interpreter speaking. Elena says, thank you so much, doctor Jim. I was waiting for your call. What kind of information do you need? Go ahead, thank doctor. Uh, what is your first, last name, and date of birth? And this is how it's done properly, guys. As you can see in this setting, the moment that we had the limited speaker on the line, the doctor keep addressing their patient, not the interpreter. And this is how it's done. This is how you do it properly. Now we're going to see another scenario. Uh, again, you see it's red and it says don't. This is how not to do it. And I'm going to proceed with thank you for calling language interpreter line. My name is Ioana. I will be a Russian interpreter. Everything you say will be confidential. How can I help you? Hi, interpreter. We're going to call a person. Her name is Alina. I'm the nurse calling to give her the test results. Tell her this. Uh, okay, sir, uh, thank you for calling. Uh, would you like to leave a voicemail if nobody answer? Yes, interpreter. I want you to tell her uh, her blood test is ready and she has some infection and the doctor will send her the medication at the pharmacy. Okay, and once again, you see the screen is red and yellow. The reason why is because we asked for the voicemail and the doctor is addressing the interpreter. Interpreter cannot speak in anybody's behalf, so this is violation of protocol. Interpreter can only interpret everything you say exactly as you say it and keep it confidential. Imagine that exactly this message is read as a voicemail. Yes, interpreter, I want you to tell her that her blood pressure and so on. How confusing will be that if you receive this type of voicemail? So the moment that we leave a voicemail, we have to forget that interpreter is there and read the message directly to our patient or customer or client. And how can we do it properly? Once again, we have do's and the green screen, and this coaching is how to use the interpreter properly. I'm going to read the scenario. Thank you for calling the language line. This is Ioana. I will be your Russian interpreter. Everything you say will be kept confidential. How can I help you? Hi, interpreter. I, we're going to call a person. Her name is Salina. I'm the nurse calling to give her the test results. Thank you for calling, sir. Would you like to leave a voicemail if nobody answer? Yeah, I would like to leave a voicemail. Okay, doctor, I'm ready to take the notes down. Would you like the voicemail to say? Uh, interpreter, I want the voicemail to say the following. Hello, Elena, this is Dr. Uh, Jim Epstein calling you. I have your test results. Please call me at 1-800-234-4423. Thank you. Uh, thank you, doctor. I'm ready to proceed. You can connect the call. And thank you for calling. This is Elena voicemail. Please leave your phone name and I'm going to call you as soon as possible. Interpreter. Здравствуйте, Елена. Спасибо большое. Вам звонит доктор Джим Айнстайн. У меня есть ваши результаты исследования. Пожалуйста, перезвоните меня на 1-800-234-4423. Спасибо большое. Хорошего дня. Doctor, I left a voicemail. Do you need any further assistance? Uh, no, uh, 
don't further assistance for now. And now we are moving to scenario number three. Once again, how not to do it? As you can see, partially it's done well. And then we have a little error once again, what not to do. Thank you for calling the language interpreter line. My name is Anya. I will be a Russian interpreter. Everything you say will be kept confidential. Hi, interpreter. We're going to call a person. Her name is Elena. For the voicemail, I'd like you to say, Hello, Elena. This is Dr. Jim Einstein calling you. I have your test results. Please call me at 1-800-234-4423. Thank you. Hello, привет. Это Elena. Hello, doctor. What? We have Elena on the line. Go Proceed. ahead, interpreter. Tell her everything. Uh, so where is the problem in this scenario? The problem is that the moment that there is a limited speaker on the line, the, the doctor should not address the interpreter any further. How to do this scenario correctly, we're going to show you on the next slide. Let's do it once again. Thank you for calling the language interpreter line. My name is Ioana, you're Russian interpreter. Everything you say will be kept confidential. How can I help you? Hi, interpreter. We're going to call a person. Her name is Alina. For the voicemail, I'd like you to say, hello, Elena. This is Dr. Jim Einstein calling you. I have your test results. Please call me back at 1-800-234-4423. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Uh, здравствуйте, это Елена на линия. Hello, doctor. We have Elena on the line. Interpreter, would you please read a voicemail and I will start from here? Uh, здравствуйте, Елена. Спасибо большое. Вам звонит доктор Джим, потому что я получил ваши результаты. Пожалуйста, перезвоните меня на телефон 1-800-234-4423. Спасибо большое. Go ahead, doctor. And this is how it's done properly. The doctor address the customer or the patient directly. So as you can see, not only on, on the speaking, the doctor address the customer directly, but I create a little paintings here or graphics. The doctor and the patients are on the same side of the slides. Why? Because the doctor address the patient directly and interpreter remains on the back. Um, and then we have scenario 3-1. Uh, let's try this scenario again. Thank you for calling the language interpreter. My name is Anya. I will be a Russian interpreter. Everything you say will be kept confidential. How can I help you? Hi, interpreter. We're going to call a person. Her name is Alina. For the voicemail, I'd like you to say, hello, Alina. This is Dr. Jim Einstein calling you. I have your test results. Please call me back at 1-800-234-4423. Thank you. Hello, здравствуйте. Это Елена на линия. Interpreter speaking. Hello, doctor. We have Elena on the line. Go ahead, doctor. Interpreter, would I, I would like you to say something else. Disregard the voicemail. Hi, Elena. This is Dr. Jim. I have received your test results. It is a good time to talk. А, хорошо, здравствуйте, Елена, вам звонит доктор Джим, я получил ваши исследования, это комфортно для вас разговаривать сейчас? А, uh, hello, yes, doctor, I was waiting for your call. And, and this is how it's properly done from the moment that we had the patient, the limited speaker on the line, the doctor addressed the patient directly and did not address the interpreter. And this is how it's properly done. Another scenario, this scenario is in the middle of the call when sometimes happen that providers forget to address their patient. And go ahead, Jose, let's start with this in the middle of the call scenario. Okay, interpreter, hold on. I want you to ask him if he has any pain while sitting. Okay, sir, please don't address the interpreter during the call. Ask the question directly to your patient to assure clear communication and quality in interpretation. Uh, what do you mean? I'm asking you to ask her what I told you. Do it. In order to assure clear communication and quality in interpretation, please direct address the customer directly. Interpreter, you've got a problem. How dare you? How rude you are. I will file a complaint. Do what I say. 
Okay, guys, so what is the problem here in this setting? The doctor isn't listening the instructions. Interpreter must read the statement every time until the doctors ask the questions directly to the patient. Interpreter is not part of the call and do not address the interpreter during a call. This is scenario how not to do it. Let's repeat the same scenario in the middle of the call. How can be done properly? Go ahead, doctor. Okay, interpreter, hold on. I want you to ask him if he has any pain while sitting. Sir, please don't address the interpreter during the call. Ask the questions directly to your patients. Uh, sorry about that. Sir, do you have any pain while sitting? It's okay to forget sometimes to address your patient directly. It happens. But the interpreter must read the same protocol reminding you to have direct communication with your customer. The interpreter has to do this constantly uh, and remind you that the interpreter is not part of the call and the doctor and the nurse have to be always on the same side on the same conversation, the interpreter always stays on the back. Uh, scenario number five, once again, we have a little portion that is done correctly and a little portion that is not done correctly. Go ahead, Jose. Can you please tell me if you have had any surgeries before? Oh, dottore, quando avevo 20 anni sono caduto da un cavallo e mi sono rotta la caviglia. Mi faceva molto male. Quando mi sono spostato qui in Stati Uniti dieci anni fa, uh, ci ho iniziato a avere un po' di mal di schiena. Interpreters. Oh, doctor, when I was 20 years old, I fell from a horse and I break my ankle. It was very painful. Then I moved here into the USA like 10 years ago, and then I had started having some back pain. Interpreter, I didn't ask you, I didn't ask this question. You must have been doing something wrong. Interpreter, you are interpreting badly. We got a problem. Okay, so here in this setting, the doctor is getting upset with the interpreter for interpreting. Do remember interpreter job is to interpret. Interpreter is not responsible to produce the answer you desire or to give an answer. The interpreter job is only to interpret. Be mindful how is done correctly. Let's do the same scenario properly done. Go ahead, Jose. Can you please tell me if you have had any surgeries before? Oh, dottore, quando avevo 20 anni, anni ho so caduta dal cavallo, mi sono rotto la caviglia, cioè faceva un dolore pazzesco. Poi mi sono spostata qui in Stati Uniti e so qui ormai da 10 anni e ultimamente ho un mal di schiena. Oh, doctor, when I was 20 years old, I fell from a horse, I broke my ankle, it was very painful, then I moved here in the USA and recently I have started having some back pain. Okay, Georgie. Thank you for sharing that, uh, but my question is if you have had any surgery or any procedures under sedation. Va bene, Giorgi, grazie che mi hai condiviso questa cosa, però la mia domanda era se tu hai avuto qualche operazione o procedura sotto l'anestesia. Ah, dottore, sì, sì, stavo per dirti questa cosa, che quando mi sono rotto la caviglia mi hanno messo qualche pinna e, insomma, facevo molto male perché l'ho rotto, hanno fatto procedura dopo. Oh, yes, yes, doctor. I was about to tell you that, that when I break my ankle, I had a procedure. They put some pins and I was under anesthesia when, uh, back then when I broke it. So do you guys see how the doctor in this scenario, in this case, Mr. Jose, address uh, the patient in each setting, not the interpreter? This is how it's done properly. Now we're going to move to the setting number three. When is appropriate to speak to the interpreter? And I'm going to give you a few settings. Jose, you're going to read one. I'm going to read one as you're already on the line. <laughs> you're already on the call, doctor. There is no running from here. So when is okay to speak to the interpreter before we have a limited speaker on the line? Introducing to each other. Can you spell your name? Can you repeat your ID number? 
Or number four, giving instructions. For example, voicemail, calling, or situation where you give instructions to the interpreter. Read the number one, Jose, doctor to the interpreter. Hello, Elena. This is Dr. Abdul. Please call me at 1-800-232-1123. So you see how the doctor leave the voicemail addressing the, the patient or Miss Elena, not the interpreter. If the second setting when we can speak the interpreter is we are giving instructions. For example, interpreter, we're going to call Jim. No voicemail. Please hold on for me to dial out. I'm informing the interpreter of what is about to happen. We do not have Mr. Jim on the line. I'm just letting know the interpreter what is going on. Uh, next setting, English speaker to the interpreter. Interpreter, we are here. Go ahead, Jose. Interpreter, we are here with Ivan. He just had a stroke. Uh, we are going to do a speaking evaluation, but be aware that a lot of repetitions will be necessary and speak slowly. Okay, guys. When is appropriate to speak to the interpreter before we have the limited speaker on the line? Go ahead. Instructions to the interpreter, voicemail or calling situation. Read the first portion, Jose, doctor to interpreter. Interpreter, this is a mental health facility and the person does not always respond properly. I would like you to interpret whatever you pick a word or anything you can understand. The patient tends to talk to himself, so be aware. Second instructions, English speaker to interpreter. Interpreter, this is a 911 call. Please give a short introduction. Interpreter, this patient has been very aggressive and uses a lot of profanity, just letting you know. That's again instructions to the interpreter. When is okay to speak to the interpreter if we have the patient present? It doesn't matter if it's in the room. For example, I have a picture doctor patient or if it's over the phone. There is just very few setting. If you doctor or patient need a repetition, clarification, or you need the interpreter to wait for something. Go ahead, Jose, read the first one. Interpreter, can you Oops. repeat the last statement? Uh, doctor to interpreter. Interpreter, I did not understand the meaning of the last statement. Can you please clarify? Interpreter, I will step out of the office. Can you hold the line for up to 10 minutes? Yes, doctor, of course. So you see that the only setting when the doctor will address the interpreter during a conversation, interpreter, I need a repetition, interpreter, I need clarification, interpreter, hold on, just to instruct or ask for repetition. There is no questions addressed to the interpreter. So remember, you can speak directly to the interpreter if there is no limited speaker, only if you leave a voicemail and you state the message of the voicemail, you give instructions to the interpreter, or you ask for repetitions of the ID number or something like that. Number two, you can speak directly to the interpreter if there is a limited speaker, only if you need repetition clarifications, or you give specific instructions to the interpreter. Otherwise, all the questions go addressed directly to the limited speaker. Let's do some settings again, what not to do. What mm -hmm. is wrong here in this painting? We have the interpreter on one line, we have the doctor watching the interpreter and abandoning the limited speaker on behind, who is barely making it. Go ahead, read, doctor, the interpreter. Read the first. Interpreter, ask him if he is okay. This is not well done. Doctor, I need you to ask him to tell you his name, birthday, address, phone number. Okay, are you ready? I plug him in. Go ahead, ask him. This is mm -hmm. no. Interpreter, just ask the question. Do your job. Again, next done, wrongly done scenario. Yes, do it. Ask what I told you. Okay, interpreter, hold on. I want you to ask him if he has any pain while sitting. 
Doctor, again, addressing the interpreter. Interpreter, I did not ask these questions. You must have been doing something wrong. Interpreter, you're interpreting badly. We got a problem here. What's the problem mm -hmm. in the main conversations or these phrases? They are all addressing the interpreter. Main, they should address the patient. How is the properly? Once again, let's repeat. Doctor to the limited speaker. Okay, Georgie, thank you for sharing this. But my question is, have you had any surgeries before and have you done any procedures under sedation? What is your first, last name and date of birth? How do you feel today, Ben? Hi, Ben. This is Dr. Jim. I have received your test results. Is it a good time to talk? Again, hi, Ben. We have bad results. It come out you have some infection. So do you see how the doctor is addressing the sick person, Mr. Ben, and the interpreter stay on the back line? This is how it's done properly. Once again, I call this slide the clutch. Let's see what is wrong with this slide. Go ahead with the first one. Okay, I need to know when was the last time you ate? Go and ask him. The second wrong portion is, okay, are you feeling dizzy? Go ahead, interpreter, ask him. I understand this looks like an infection. Go ahead, interpreter, ask the question. Doctor to interpreter, so what did he say? Tell, tell me what did he say? Go ahead, tell me what he say. I want to know what he told you. And remember, guys, you do not have to ask the interpreter every question to interpret, to ask, to do it. You do not have to give those orders. All you have to do is pause, wait for the interpreter. If you keep speaking, the interpreter is going to stay quiet because the interpreter does not want to speak with you. There is no re need to repeat. This is called clutch in speaking. That's why I put this guy that is cleaning. You do not have to give instructions. You just simply have to pose. Remember how to do it correctly. You see the doctor and the patients are on the same slide and the interpreter is on the back. Let's go ahead. Okay, Georgie, thank you for sharing that. But my question is, have you had surgery before? What is your first, last name, and date of birth? How do you feel today, Ben? Hi, Ben. This is Dr. Jim. I have received your test results. Is it a good time to talk? And Ben, we have a bad result. It came out you have an infection. So you see how the doctor is addressing directly Ben, the person, the patient, or the Georgie, and not the interpreter. This is how it's done properly. And then we have another slide here. Uh, what is your first last name? How do you feel today, Ben? Uh, same, more or less. Just the most important things for provider is remember you speak directly to your person. Forget that there is an interpreter on the back. Forget the interpreter. Just kind of ignore the interpreter in your thoughts and address the questions directly to your speaker and thank you guys for being here that was our mock sets with jose thank you jose for doing this and reading the portion of the doctor how to do it properly and how not to do it you want to say something for goodbye jose Thank you very much, Joanna, for letting me ha having this participation and this uh, training. And thank you very much, guys, for um, everything. And again, my name is Jose. I'm a linguist, polyglot, and medical interpreter. And this is the proper setting scenarios for interpreter training.